Merry Christmas, Light Church. Thanks so much for joining us. And if you were able to join us on Christmas Eve Eve, so thankful that you guys made it out. Um, and then if you didn't, we're going to be showing you guys a little bit of the message and some time of worship as well. Uh, but first and foremost, before we dive in, wanted to say thank you from the bottom of our hearts for those who donated toys to our friends down in Mexico at Ciudad de Dios. We were hoping to collect 800 toys and you guys well exceeded that. They are actually estimating that each kid will be able to have two toys. Thank you so much. I continue to be blown away by the generosity of our community. Um, also want to let you know that New Year's Eve is coming up. It's a Sunday. And rather than having our different gatherings at the locations, we're going to only have two in the morning, 9 and 11 a.m. at La Paloma. But we will be having a worship night at the chapel from 10 p.m. to midnight. Obviously, there's going to be no children's ministry for that, but we'd love for you guys to join us. It's going to be a beautiful time. And then back on January 7th, we'll have our regular gatherings at the different locations and gathering times at 9-11 in the theater, 10 a.m. downtown, and 4 and 6 over at the chapel. Hope you guys can join us. And if you need prayer, if you'd like to give, if you want to know how to get connected, head to lightsandiego.com. Merry Christmas again.
One of my favorite Christmas traditions growing up was on Christmas Eve, we would gather around as a family and we would watch Charlie Brown's Christmas. It was my dad's favorite Christmas movie. It has now become mine. And there is that amazing moment where Charlie Brown in disgust throws up his arm and says, can anyone tell me what Christmas is all about? And Linus comes and says, sure, Charlie Brown, I can tell you what Christmas is all about. And then all of a sudden the spotlight shows down and he reads from Luke chapter two. This is gonna be our text today. And there were shepherds living in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths, lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God, saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those whom his favor rests. When the angel had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed and what the shepherds had said to them. Another way you could translate this is everyone was filled with wonder at what the shepherds had to say to them. This passage is central to the nativity story because it is the announcement, the heralding of what was finally entering into the world. Now in ancient times, when the firstborn son was born, oftentimes a family would hire a herald. They would hire someone to go and announce to the town that the the child has been born and depending on your level of affluence, there was the kind of the, the elaborate nature of that announcement from everything from very common and very understated to something that was elaborate and full of the entourage. But at the birth of the king, the herald was a combination both angelic hosts and shepherds. Now, I got to tell you, one, one scholar points out that the only uh, the only people that make sense in this nativity story are the angels. Mary and Joseph and shepherds do not fit the magnitude of who has just been born, which has just brought up this question for me that has just, just really driven me to read and to research and to study. The question has been, why shepherds? Why these shepherds? Why were they the ones that the angels showed up to that designated them as the heralds that Christ had been born? Now this question, why the shepherds, oftentimes is answered with a level of simplicity, but the reality is uh, there is, I think there's different layers to why the shepherds were chosen. chosen. There's really three different theories. The first theory is that the shepherds carried with them a level of social disdain. This comes from writings from Aristotle about 300 years earlier. There's a quote that just talks about the low level that the shepherds had, that they were thieves and they were low lives. And and then there is writings about 500 years after this event in the Babylonian Talmud that talks again about the shepherds occupying this low life. And the idea behind the shepherds being in this low social position was that it magnified God's grace. That it was because they were these outcast, marginalized, social, uh, kind of low-class people. It's exactly who God wanted to choose. And the, the, the premise is that no one would grow up and want to be a shepherd. I was having a conversation with my son Augustine uh, this week, and and I just was hanging out with him, like, my, my son, what do you want to be when you grow up? And he's like, I want to be a veterinarian. And I'm like, man, that's awesome. You're so good with animals. I love that. And he's like, or maybe I want to be, like, grow up, I want to be a babysitter. I'm like, that's also, you know, if you could just be a dad, too, like, that's another option. And then he leans in, and he's like, Dad, can I tell you a secret? And I'm like, what? He's like, you, wanna, you don't want to know what I really want to be? I'm like, yeah. 
He's like, I want to be a famous jet skier. <laughs> I was like, just like totally taken off. I was like, oh, where did you, what, how do you know what a jet ski is? <laughs> which I didn't get an answer to, but apparently uh, there's this ambition in my child to do this. And I would say that as parents dreamt about their uh, children growing up to be something, this theory would say no one would ever want to be a shepherd, right? It would be on the least of people's list. And this showed, again, the great grace of God, uh, of God by choosing shepherds. Now, that, I think that's, that's a fine theory, and I think it makes sense. But there's a second theory and it's not so much the social framework, but it's the biblical framework. Because if you look at the biblical framework, shepherds are very rarely ever talked about as kind of socially low. Uh, matter of fact, they're often dignified. The kind of the, the main characters of the biblical story of Abraham, Moses, and David were all shepherds. Jesus himself refers to himself as the good shepherd. The early church fathers, one of the most common titles that was given was that of shepherd, now translated pastor. And so if you look at the biblical theory, um, you would see not them being kind of a social lower class showing God's grace, but rather you would see them as kind of uh, having this level of kind of uh, biblical significance. And this biblical significance really articulates God's prophetic intentionality as he's writing the story that it's shepherds that get to be the herald because they are heralding who? The great shepherd. I mean, think about the paradox there. Uh, these shepherds go and they meet this child, but in meeting this child, they meet their great shepherd. But then the third theory um, is essentially we, we don't know why. These shepherds were never given names. They're general, they just have general obscurity. Um, they're in a little town. They're never mentioned again in Luke's gospel or in the book of Acts or in any of the New Testament writers. And, and so there is this sense, and if you look at the theme of why Mary was chosen similarly, it wasn't because of anything other than the fact that you never would have chosen Mary. And it's this third one um, that I actually find a, uh, kind of unique, but I also lean towards is, yes, there, there's biblical significance to shepherds. Yes, people could make a case that they had a social um, kind of lower class. But I think the point is we don't know anything about these shepherds, yet the angels show up and their announcement is this, this is good news for all people. And so they chose people who in that world and, and probably in this modern world would have had no significance. And that is where I think the story begins, is that we see a God showing up in a time and space of human history, not only to show His grace and intentionality, but to show ultimately His abundant love for those who feel like the world has forgotten, those who are, who are left in the back fields, if you will, those who feel like they live in general obscurity. It's not the special people, the famous people, the successful people that God came for only. He, they, they're included in that. But He came for the common person, the person who feels invisible, the person who feels obscure, the person who feels like maybe there's, there's not much in terms of what God is doing, and I, I hope you hear this, if you find yourself in that storyline, Jesus showed up for you. He showed up like he did for these shepherds who were probably just minding their business, not thinking about the substance of their life. And all of a sudden, not only does an angel show up like he does for Joseph and Mary, but a host of angels show up. You can, you can count on one hand the time in the Bible where there's an actual host of angels show up, and this is one of those times, and the only people who witness it are these obscure shepherds, which just shows the extravagance and the beautiful nature of who God is. Matt Chandler says, Why the shepherds? Because God brings glory to Himself when He is the authority, power, and presence that makes things happen. And then the, these shepherds do something amazing. Uh, after they collect themselves and uh, kind of regain feeling into their body after the shock they just experienced by seeing an entire heaven opened up to see these angels, is they respond in obedience. And what they go and find is absolutely paradoxical, even scandalous. I mean, think about this. They showed up like the angel said they would find was a baby lying in a feeding trough made into a bassinet, 
not wrapped in blankets or robes, but in, in rags and cloth. And this baby, which would have been scandalous enough and shocking enough to see in those conditions, was not just any ordinary baby. It was the King of kings and Lord of lords, the creator of all the earth, lying in the most humble and meek position with no power. I mean, think about this. With, I mean, the, the God of the universe no longer could lift his own head, no longer could tell his arms what to do was completely submitted to the human experience. Why? Because this God went through all of that for the generally obscure, for the people who are invisible to show up. This was good news. Again, what did the angels say? For all people. This is something that's so beautiful. And, I, and, and really an example the shepherds showed to us that Maybe the shepherds were shown because they wouldn't have, they didn't miss it. So many people easily could have missed a scene like this, beholding what God has. And I think that's an example for us that we don't want to miss what God has for us. Uh, a couple of years ago, LeBron James uh, beat the, the highest scoring uh, or the, the scoring record in the NBA. And everyone kind of knew it was going to happen. Apparently, the entire crypto arena knew it was going to happen because the minute he scores this winning shot, Literally, the lights go down, confetti goes off, lasers are showing. They stop the entire game just to celebrate this guy's accomplishment, which was a bit bizarre. But after the fact, there was this photo that was circulated around the internet where as LeBron is taking the shot that if he makes it, he will become the all-time scoring leader in the NBA. There's a picture, and I believe we'll have this as you're watching this, of the entire stadium with their phones out. And at the very floor level, sitting next to LeBron James' two sons, is Phil Knight, the owner of Nike. And he's sitting there with no phone and just watching tentatively. The only person in the audience who is not trying to capture this moment. And I love that photo because I think everyone is watching that historic scene through the lens of a device hoping to maybe have a sense of prominence or a sense of being there. But there's one person who actually didn't miss the moment, was fully present. And when I was thinking about the shepherds showing up to Jesus, that image came to my mind that they were the people that are like, oh, the entire, I mean, how wild is the entire world is going about their normal business, whether it's sleeping at night or waking up early in the morning. And these shepherds saw what the world couldn't see. But that is our invitation. Would you see Jesus afresh this season? And the last thing I want to leave you with is that these shepherds left what they saw and they began, began to proclaim a powerful new reality. It talks about how they went and they, dis, and they declared what, the, what they had been told, what the angels had told them. They didn't just say, like, go check out this baby. They they brought the message with them. And the message that they brought was this, peace on earth, good news to men, for those whom his favor rests. There's this idea, peace on earth. Now, if you know anything about the Old Testament or Jewish literature, the central theme of the writing is this idea of peace, this idea of shalom, this sense of God ordering things. And in this moment, the announcement to these Jewish shepherds is peace is here. There's a new reality that has been burst into the seams that is now available for everyone who would cling to Jesus. This is why this was good news of great joy for all people, that these shepherds were able to be some of the first to gaze upon their great shepherd. Charles Spurgeon said this, Jesus the good shepherd will not travel at such a rate as to override the lambs. He has tender consideration for the poor and the needy. Kings usually look to the interests of the great and the rich, but the kingdom of our great shepherd, he cares most for the poor. The weaklings and the sickly of the flock are the, sub are the special objects of the Savior's care. You think, dear heart, that you are forgotten because of your nothingness and weakness and poverty. Yet this is the very reason you are remembered. So this Christmas season, would we be reminded of the great shepherd Jesus 
who came in and who gave us peace, not just for some, but for all people, for me and for you. Merry Christmas.
You're 